In this video, I will show you how to add a fade to black effect to your VR Unity project whenever the player tries to peek through a wall. This is useful for a climbing mechanic, although it can also be used to prevent peeking through wall when just moving around your level. In the previous video, I have explained how to add a pushback effect to stop players from peeking through walls using raycasts to detect the, the collisions. In this video, we are going to build on top of that logic to add the fade out effect to our game. First, to add this effect to our game, we need to find in our hierarchy the main camera object and we are going to right click on it and to add a 3D object and a cube. Now, in our camera view, you will see that nothing has changed. We have not hid the outside world or the level objects from our camera view. This is because our cube is only showing the front faces. To fix that, we can go to our project tab, right click, create a new material and just change its shader to be universal render pipeline and let's say unlit and we can assign it to our cube. Now let's select our cube again and we can remove our box collider because we do not need it. Select our material, let's change the color to be black and let's change the render face to be back. And now this should temporarily work, but this solution will not work perfectly. We are going to still see our hands and the objects that go inside the cube, which isn't that great. An alternative would be to create a custom shader. So let's right click in the project tab, create a new shader, and I'm going to select the unlit shader, and let's call this fade to black, and let's open it up. Now, the default shader will not work for us. I'm going to just paste the code that I have prepared. This will be available on GitHub repository, so search for the link in the description of this video. For the properties, we are going to have the alpha value transparency from in the range of 0 to 1. Point 0.2 will be the default and the color uh, called color and this will be just a black color. Now in the sub shader, we're going to uh, set the tag to be Q transparent plus 5. We're going to ignore projector true and the render type will be transparent so that we can render transparent surface based on what we need. Now the most important parameters are in the pass. We are going to set cal off to render back faces. We are going to set the z test to be always. So this will mean that the cube will be rendered on top of everything else. And z write off will mean that we can render the transparency correctly. Next we are going to just create a CG program with the vertex and fragment shaders. So specific methods. And we are going to need to add to update those two fields. Those are because we are using a single pass instance rendering in our open XR settings. We need to have those. And in the uh, we are going to grab our parameters color and alpha. And in the vertex shader, we will need to call those three uh, methods. And next we are going to go into the fragment shader. Here all we need to do is call this specific method. And next we are going to use our color and the alpha value. And we are going to just set it to the color of our a cube so that we can block the player's view of the environment around uh, the player. Feel free to read more of those descriptions to learn how this all works. Basically just save this uh, shader and go back to Unity. Great! All we need to do is right click on this and create a new material and we are going to save this shader to black and we are going to assign it to our cube. So now if we select it the cube in the hierarchy and in the inspector if we tweak, uh, tweak the transparency we can see that this uh, view in the camera changes and if i press play so you should see now that our uh, screen is dimmer and the fade out effect affects every object in our scene now probably i should change the name because uh, the value is incorrect the one should be transparent and zero should be opaque still this should work now if we set the transparency value to one everything should be hidden and that's what we are going to use for our effect. To actually use it, we will need to have a script that will control this shader. I have created a new script called fade effect. Let me paste some properties here. What we will need to have for the delay effect to work is a serialized field private float fade delay. This will be how long it takes to fade out or in from our black or transparency. 
And next we are going to have a material underscore material reference so that we can modify the shader properties and the private bool is fading out false. This will be useful to make our uh, logic more performant. Now I'm going to create two methods. First one will be the fade method. So we are going to call it from uh, other scripts. So public void fade. This will take bool fade out. So if we want to fade the screen, we are going to pass here true and the other way false. And we are going to have those two checks. If the fade out is true and is fading out is true, we are going to return because we already have faded to black. Otherwise, if those two are false, we are going to return also because everything is transparent. If that is not the case, we are going to swap the is fading out value to the bool flag passed as, a, as an argument. So we are going to stop all coroutines and I'm just going to uh, print the debug.log starting to fade and based on this bull flag out or in and we are going to have here start coroutine play effect fade out and the play effect is our coroutine so private i enumerator play effect it will also take the bull flag fade out and since we can have a situation where our fade out didn't finish before we uh, removed our head from the wall and thus triggered the fade in effect we're going to have the start alpha equals material get float underscore alpha. Now, if you recall, this is the property name of our shader, the alpha value here. Now, this will be needed for us to correctly play this coroutine. Based on the start alpha, we're going to first uh, calculate the remaining time. But first, we need to have the end alpha value. So do we, are we fading out? If so, the value needs to be one, else the value has to be zero. And that the remaining time will be based on the fade de delay. So this is the max time and end alpha minus the start alpha. So this is the, uh, the value that is currently set. And this will give us the remaining time to use to fade in or out. And next we just have the coroutine. So float elapsed time equals zero. While the elapsed time is less than fade delay, we're going to add to the elapsed time plus equals time. And to include the remaining time, we're going to calculate float temp value for the fade effect. We're going to uh, use math f.lerp start alpha and alpha and the elapsed time divided by the remaining time. All we need to do is set this to the material set float alpha value of our shader, the temp value, and we are going to yield return null until this time matches when we are going to set the material set float to the end alpha value just to be sure that we have one or zero set there okay so this concludes our fade out effect now we need to connect it with our system let's save the script let's go back to unity we can drag our fade effect onto our cube and this should automatically have everything set up now in the previous tutorial in the previous video i have already prepared on the main camera the head collision handler so I'm going to reuse it from our previous video. Feel free to check it out. The link will be in the description. And we have the detector which will detect the collisions. So now I need to connect the fade effect to my head collision handler whenever uh, our player will be climbing uh, in our VR game. I will include both scripts in the GitHub repository. So let's just, just open the head uh, collision handler. Great. So head collision handler uses the head collision detectors result to push the character uh, controller back based if we, on the direction in which we are colliding. Now, instead of this, we could call our fade effect instead. So what we can do is go to the top. We will need to add here two new fields, a serialized field private fade effect underscore black screen fade. And since I want to apply my logic to the climbing mechanic, I'm going to have a public bull is climbing, gather and setter. With this ready, I just want to go to my update method and we could, instead of calling the character controller, call our fade effect. But before that, we need to modify the conditions here. So instead of returning whenever the collider hits count is less or equal to zero, I'm going to call whenever the count is less or equal to zero, screen fade dot fade false since we want to make the screen transparent and we are going to return if we are climbing i'm going to set the fade to be true and basically uh, if the detector has detected some objects we could use this as a default uh, method to hide the level from our player when they are peeking through a wall but i will leave my character controller push back functionality 
when I'm colliding with a wall when I'm moving and I'm going to just fade away when I am climbing. And this is it uh, about the changes to the head collision handler. I'm going to save this script and go back to Unity. Great. All I need to do is select my main camera when I where I have the head collision handler and I'm going to assign my cube as the black screen fade. I'm going to just set on the cube the transparency to zero or actually this should be one so that we have the screen transparent and I'm going to select my uh, climbing area and since I'm using the climb interactable from the sample project of Unity it has the uh, interactable events and I'm just going to select the first last selected I'm going to just drag here my main camera object to the first selected and last selected and when we have first touched the climbing area I'm going to call the head collision handler and I'm going to set the is climbing to be true and in the last selected exit when we let go of the climbing area I'm just going to set the same is climbing uh, bull flag but to be false and now I can simply press play now if we start climbing and poking our head through our wall we should see the fade out effect working but something is wrong because if we go too far we are not detecting the collider and this is because we are inside the collider so raycasts are not detecting it to fix our issue i will select my detector and open the head collision detector script okay this script handles how we are detecting the performing detection using raycasts and in the update it controls how the detection is performed but we need to go to the top and all we need to add here is a new property uh, a public ball inside collider with a getter and a private setter which we will set to detect if we're inside the collider or not next i will just slide down where my update method is and just below it i will create a new method called check if inside collider we're going to get as an argument position distance and a layer mask and all we need to do is call physics dot check sphere at this position with a specified distance mask and query trigger interaction ignore this query should return true if we're inside a collider okay if i have that all i need to do is go to the update method where i'm shooting my recast and detecting the collider hits and if i know that this uh, will only fail if the collider count is less or equal to zero i will optimize my code by calling if the count is less or equal to zero only then I will call, uh, call our inside collider property to be equal to check if inside collider passing the transform position of our detector the detection distance and the detection layer to detect if you are inside a collider or not and one more thing that i forgot is to set the inside collider to be false before each check of the collisions because if this code doesn't run it will never be reset so with this done we can go to our head collision handler and update this code here and i need to modify those checks at the start of the update basically if the inside collider is true and we are climbing we're going to set the screen fade to fade true so to fade out if the collider's count is less than zero we are going to keep the fade uh, to be false so that we are going to fade in and if we are climbing despite the fact that the count is zero we're going to fade to true so this whole thing should handle the situation where the count is less or equal to zero but we are still climbing and we are inside a collider let's save our updated update method in our head collision handler and let's go to the project and press play now this should fix our issue so if we try pushing our head through a wall when climbing we're going to see that the screen fades out even though we are inside a collider so this should all work now now in case you still have some issues the best way to make the collider bigger is to add for example a cube that uh, we can disable the mesh, mesh render and if we place it behind the wall we can ensure that the player is always uh, inside the collider if we need to persist the fade out effect if the player moves too far for our raycast to detect our wall so this is the simplest way to add this extra uh, way to protect our player from being uh, from breaking the immersion by being able to peek through a wall and that is basically it for this system although this isn't much of a fade out because if the fade out is too slow we are going to still see behind the wall so the fade out 
kind of needs to be instantaneous for the uh, player not to be able to see behind a wall. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.